Hello, and welcome back to the channel, where I share tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your media. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use Jellyfin. Are you wondering what the heck is Jellyfin? Jellyfin is a volunteer-built media solution that puts you in control of your media. Stream to any device from your own server with no strings attached. Your media, your server, your way. Sounds awesome, right? Well, stick around, because I'm going to walk you through how to set up Jellyfin, how to add your media, and how to customize your Jellyfin experience. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. All right, let's get into it. First thing we need to do is set up some media shares. If you followed along in my Plex video, we would have set those up then. If not, let me show you how to do that real quick. Within your Unraid dashboard, go to Shares, go down to Add Share, and for the share name, I would enter something like Media. And in the comments, you just put in a little comment noting what the share is for. So for media, I'm just going to put in data share or media. The primary storage is going to be on the array. So down at the bottom, you just click add share and then click done. I already had a media share, so we'll just continue on. Then you'll need to go back into the media share and make sure you turn on export to yes. Click apply and then done. Next, you'll need to open up your media share. To do that, open up your file explorer Go to your server address. In my case, it is backslash backslash 10.0.0.11. And then you should find your new media folder in there. Open that up. Once in there, you're going to want to create other folders or subdirectories for movies, TV shows, music, and photos. Once that's set up, go ahead and exit out of that. Now we're going to go install Jellyfin. Once you've got your folders created, you're going to need to copy your media files into them. So for your movies, just go ahead and copy the movies in there. And same with the TV shows. And once that's done, you can go ahead and close that folder. Now let's get Jellyfin installed. Let's jump over to the Apps tab. And in the search box, go ahead and type in Jellyfin. Most of the containers I've installed in the past have all been bin hex containers. So that's what I'm going to choose here. First thing we need to do is check the port. Here you'll see that host port 1, Jellyfin wants to use 8096 as the port. Let's see if that's available in our system. If you scroll down, go to Show Docker Allocations. Then I like to do Control F for a Find feature. Type in 8096, and your browser will highlight any that are found. In this case, it's found two, and they are both within the container, and nothing within the Docker allocations that are already installed. So we're clear to move forward. I'll close that search and carry on. And for Host Path 2, I'm going to change this to backslash mnt backslash user and then the media folder which we just created then i'll click off to the side then all the way to the bottom i'm going to press apply and once the container is fully pulled down go ahead and click done all right let's move over on to setup to do that let's go to our docker tab in there look for the binhex jellyfin container and all the way over on the right turn on the auto start and I'm going to clean my page up here a little bit and put the binhex jellyfin container within a folder. If you've not seen my video on my top 11 Unraid system add-ons, which includes this Docker folder setup, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. All right, we're going to go over to the jellyfin icon, click on it, and then click web UI. And here you'll be prompted with welcome to jellyfin. Pretty much what we need to do is just follow the prompts. So we'll click next. And it wants a username for the person that's going to be using this. Since this is my demo server, I'm just going to call it demo. If you'd like a password for your account, go ahead and put a password in and then confirm it below. I'm not going to worry about this as it's not my primary account. So when you're finished, go ahead and hit next. Now we need to add your media to Jellyfin. To do that, click add media library. For the content type, you'll select whatever type of content you're adding. I'm going to add movies first, so let's start there. So we'll drop down, select Movies. The display name Movies is fine. Then under Folder, we'll click the plus to select the folder that we want to add to the movie collection. Down below, I've got Media, and then I'll click on Movies, and then hit OK. Then under Library Settings, you've got the preferred download language. Since I speak English, we'll select that. In the country, I am in the United States, so I'll select the United States. All right, scrolling down, there's a bunch more options. The only one I'm real concerned about is automatically adding to collection. So I'll turn that option on. And all the way at the bottom, there's a couple other options that you might be interested in. 
One, you can save the artwork into the media folders. That allows you to save all the artwork in an easy accessible place. And if you want your media to have chapters, the easiest way to do that is turn on Enable Chapter Image Extraction, and then Extract Chapter Images during the library scan. But these things are totally optional. You can set it up however you'd like. Then click OK when you're happy with your selection. Now let's add TV shows. Once again, click Add Media Library. The content this time is going to be Shows. Display name of shows is good. Folders, I'll click the plus. Select Media, and then go down to TV. And then I'll hit OK. And then here we'll set up the same thing that I did for the last one. Preferred download language is English. And then for country, it's going to be the United States. Scrolling down. And I'm going to enable the chapter image extraction and have it do it during a library scan. When you're happy with your selections, hit OK. And next, let's add music. Add library. Content type is music. Folders. Media. Music. And press OK. Once again, English. Select your country, and I'm just going to hit OK on that. And the last one I'm going to add is photos. So click Add Library. Content type is photos. Go to the folders, select media, go to your photos. Press OK. And that all looks fine for me, so I'll hit OK. Jellyfin also supports other media, so if you hit Add Media Library, Go to content type, you'll see that it has the options for books, music videos, mixed movies, and shows. It's all I have in my library, so I'm not going to worry about adding anything else right now. Hit the back arrow to go back. In my main production machine, I have additional libraries in there, such as documentaries or 3D movies. To add that type of thing, you just do the same. You'd click Add Media Library. Content type is going to be a movie. I'm going to call this one 3D Movies. Then you simply go to your folder and you browse to wherever that folder is. You'd select it, then you hit OK. It's just like setting the other ones up. But since I don't have that on this one, I'm just going to back out of it. When you've got your media all set up, go ahead and hit Next. And then select your preferred metadata language. In this case, English, United States is fine. Going to hit Next. Jellyfin has remote access capabilities. I'm not interested in that, so I'm just going to skip it for now. And once you're done, hit Finish. Next, it wants you to sign in. Here, you'll enter your username and your password that you created earlier. My username was demo. I didn't have a password, so I'll just leave it blank and then hit sign in. Now, Jellyfin is going to scan through your libraries, look at your media, and download any customized art. The initial login looks kind of boring and plain. It's probably got some errors. Like, I have no idea what this title here is. So Jellyfin should be in the background checking the media to make sure it's properly mashed up and getting the media art for it. And most of the media I have on the server is just dummy data. It's text files that have no contents that are just named as movies. So the chapter selection in that is not going to work. After Jellyfin has processed your media, if you go into the movies category, you'll see the movies that it's already found. And going to the home icon in the top left takes you back to the home screen. You can go into music. You can go to photos, and you can go to your TV shows. And inside of there, you can open up each individual item to see the seasons and the episodes within there. Criminal Minds and Smallville are just dummy data, so there's nothing in those. Beverly Hillbillies, that was public domain media, so I grabbed some of that so I could show you how it works. If you go in there, it'll show you a nice background, the title of the show, the years that it ran, its rating, a brief description of the show, when you scroll down, you'll see the seasons listed in the middle, and then the cast and the crew is at the bottom. By clicking on a season, it'll open up that season and show you each individual episode and a description for that episode. The top left, you hit the back arrow. It'll go back a level. And on the right-hand side, you've got the play button. You can view a trailer. You can shuffle the episodes. You can mark it as played. You can add it to your favorites, plus more. We'll go back home. Same thing goes with movies. You click into the movies, click into the movie itself, cover art, background image, the name of the movie, the year it was released, the rating, the play option, trailers, description, 
cast and crew. And I'm going to go back one. Since I have no idea what this first one is, let's go in there and find out. You click on the three dots for more. You can go down to Media Info. It'll tell you the name of the file and the path to it. In this case, it's Schindler's List. I have no idea why this title is coming up. Let's see about fixing this. To do that, I find it's easiest while you're in here just to copy the name. I'll go back an item. The three dots again, and then this time we want to go to Identify. We'll paste in the name. The year is 1993. Then hit Search. Once you find the proper match, go ahead and select it. And then hit OK. And now scrolling down, we'll see that it's properly in there. There it is. Much better. For each item that you find that's incorrect in your library, you can repeat those steps to correct it. Click on the three dots, go down to Media Info, find the actual title for it, which is right there, Transformers. That's 2009. We'll go back, drop down, identify, type in the name, the year, have it search. It's the proper one. Hit OK. And there it is at the bottom. I'll go through and fix the rest of these later. So across the top, you've got suggestions. Next to that, you've got trailers which it says install the trailers channel to enhance your movie experience, which we haven't added that yet, so we'll just move on. And if you've marked anything as a favorite, it would show up under favorites. And then collections, if you turned on the option to make collections and you have a collection in your system, it would show up here. And the last item is genres, which allows you to search by different genres. So we got a list of action movies, adventure movies, animation movies, comedies, so on and so forth. I'm going to go back to the home. If you've started a movie or a TV show but didn't finish it, the next up option will allow you to resume the movie or will allow you to watch the next episode where you left off. Under latest movies, you'll find the list of the latest movies that you've added to your system. Same with latest music and latest photos and your latest shows. Now let's talk about some customization for Jellyfin. There's a couple different ways to get into it. The first way is to click on your user icon and then under administration, you'd click dashboard. The other option is you can just click the hamburger menu on the top left and go right to Dashboard. They both get you to the same place, just two different ways of doing it. If you're not going to be the only one using Jellyfin, then you might want to create additional users. To do that, within the Dashboard, a couple icons down is Users. Go ahead and click on it. Then you click the plus option, type in their name, and I always use Bob, so Bob gets an account. Bob's not going to have a password. Under Library Access, you can enable access to all libraries, or you can select individual libraries. Let's just give Bob access to movies and our shows. And click Save. Now you can choose if you want Bob to have remote access, if you allow Bob to manage the server, whether or not you want him to access live TV, different media playback options. You can limit Bob's internet streaming bit rate, in case you have that one person that likes to abuse it. Under the Sync Play Access, you can allow the user to create and join groups, you can allow media deletion, remote control. There's there's lots of options in here, so just read through. If there's anything that you want that user to have, you just enable it or disable it. Once you're done with your selection, you click Save. So now if we go up to the user, we go to Sign Out. Now let's sign Bob in. Bob didn't have a password. And look there, it, it did just as we expected. Bob only has access to movies and TV shows. The photos and music won't even show up for him. All right, let's log Bob out, and we'll go back to the demo account. One of the nice things with Jellyfin is there's lots of plugins available. Let me show you how to set one of those up. So we'll go back to the menu, and then under the dashboard, scroll down, and at the bottom you'll see plugins. Go ahead and select that. And then on the top in the center is catalog. Once you select the catalog, you'll see several different options for plugins listed. Look through the list. If there's something that interests you, go ahead and install it. And they are categorized to help you out. So we've got authentication, general, just some general stuff, subtitle extracting, live TV stuff, different metadata places, some fan art, some notifications. I'm going to choose reports. So you select it. 
then click install. Once it's done, hit got it. But before the plugin will fully take effect, you're going to have to restart Jellyfin. So let's go back to our Unraid server. Then under the Docker containers, find Jellyfin and click the icon and then hit restart. And that's back up. So let's go back to our Jellyfin instance. Looks like it's not fully loaded yet. There we go. All right, now to go look at the reports. It's the same place. Menu, dashboard. Now you go to the very bottom and you'll see the plugins option. Reports is listed underneath. Go ahead and click on reports. Reports gives you a couple different options. You can either get a report on your media or on the activity on the server itself. Under status, it will show you issues that it's found for each of your items in your library. Like for nine, it's missing a trailer. Like the kite runner down here, that's missing a logo. You can also install third-party plugins. I'll leave a link below so you can get the full list from Jellyfin themselves. But let's set one up and I'll show you how it works. I'm going to open a new tab and we'll go to Jellyfin's site so you can get a list of them. And about halfway down you'll find third-party plugins listed. I am interested in the skin manager here. Click on the GitHub link. That'll open it up in a new tab. If you scroll down, it'll show you the install process. And it says, in Jellyfin, you go to Dashboard, Plugins, Repositories, and then you add in this link. So let's copy this link right now over here. We'll go back to Jellyfin. And we can do it from here, but I'll show you from the beginning. So we'll, we'll go back home. The Hamburger menu. Dashboard. Scroll down, find plugins, go to repositories, click the plus, we'll paste in the URL, and then for repository name, we'll name this one Skin Manager, and then click save. And it's basically just warning you to make sure that you actually trust this place, so I do, I'm going to hit OK. Now we go back to catalog, and now if you look through your list, you'll see that Skin Manager has been added to the plugin list. It's the same process. You click onto the plugin and click install. Okay, to, for the warning, and then got it. Now we need to restart Jellyfin again. We'll go back to our Unraid, find the Jellyfin container. We'll open it up and restart. Watch the little arrows. And it's been restarted. So we'll go back to Jellyfin and I'm gonna hit F5 to refresh it. I'll go home again. Yep, looks like it's working. It's up. Now let's go check that plugin out. Click the hamburger menu, metadata, plugins, and over here you'll find Skin Manager. Select that one. Skin Manager allows you to change the look and feel of your Jellyfin instance. Since we're on the default skin, let's scroll down and take a look at what it looks like currently. There's the login page, the Homer index page library page, the title page. Looks like what we're used to. But we can change that by selecting a different skin right at the top. Let's do the jelly skin. It says it's a very bright and colorful look using lots of drop shadows. You can further customize it by selecting some of the options below. You can have different gradients. Nice sunset gradient or mauve night sky. Let's we'll stick with the default for now. Theme logos. Styles the page in such a way in which logos are used instead of names. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to leave it on default for now. But let's take a look at what it looks like down below. So there's a preview of your login page, the Homer index page, library page, and then the title page. To set the skin, just hit set skin. Now if we go back to the home, you'll see that the skin has been changed. I like the skin manager. It allows me to customize Jellyfin to make it look the way that I want it to look. That's the basics of Jellyfin. If you're looking to watch on your TV rather than a web browser, there are some options. Jellyfin has support for a desktop client, 
Kodi, Android, iOS, Android TV, including Google TV and Fire TV, and Roku's, and even WebOS for LG TVs. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. Personally, I use Google Chromecast with Google TV and love it. What do you use? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to find out. If you're looking to pick up a Chromecast with Google TV or a Roku, I'll leave a link in the description below as well. What do you think? Jellyfin or Plex? Which one is better? Let me know in the comments. If Plex is more your thing, be sure to watch this next. But before we go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.